and I need to ask for your assistance again in delivering a message and getting a message to the public. Uh, as you've heard, the public has heeded uh, the directions during the day to shelter in place in a number of communities. Um, by that, we meant and expected and hoped that people would stay home and stay inside. Uh, as we go through the day, we are learning that uh, a number of people uh, probably large numbers of people found their way to work before receiving the message and are now sheltering in place in work sites and offices throughout the region and particularly uh, in some of our large Boston employers. So I need to speak to those people. Uh, if you are at work, we do not expect you to shelter in place and stay there. We encourage you to leave, uh, to get in your cars and drive home. Um, we understand that public transit is not running. Um, uh, taxis are now running in the city of Boston. So taxis are available. Uh, if necessary, uh, you can call friends and ask them to pick you up. But we want to make clear that we are not expecting people to be sheltering in place uh, throughout the day and into the night in businesses. So again, I thank the media for helping us deliver this message. Uh, we'll push it out a number of ways. But again, if you are at work, please feel free to get in your cars uh, and drive home and shelter in place at home. Call taxis if necessary. Call friends to come get you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. It was a very brief news conference. Yeah. The principal message is if you're, if you're at work, downtown Boston, go home. You can go home. We're not asking you to be locked down in your place of business. You can you can get out if you can get a cab. MBTA service is not uh, running uh, in all places, and so find some way to get home. But you can leave. You are not locked down in your business and in you Boston. You may end up having to deal with a perimeter situation if you get into the Watertown area. If that's your place of residence, right. but just be patient and uh, expect it not to go swiftly when you're on your way home. Let's bring in Todd Keskevich. He's over at MIT Police at this hour where tragically they have lost a police officer, 26-year-old man, Sean Collier. I see the black bunting up behind you, Todd, and, and that is always just a sobering reminder of what's happened. It certainly is, Heather, and that went up just a, a few hours ago. Very difficult to see that go up because, of course, we know what that symbolizes. Uh, just behind me, I know there's, there's a, a brick pillar. It's difficult to see, but people have been dropping off flowers throughout the day. They've also been dropping off food and coffee for the officers, just a sign that they care, a sign that they know that it's not just the MIT Police Department that is grieving, that is hurting, but this entire community of Cambridge. Sean Collier, as you said, was just 26 years of age. He'd been on the MIT Police Force just over a year, originally from Wilmington. He'd been living in Somerville, would have been on the Somerville Police Force this summer. We got a statement from his family a short time ago saying, quote, we're heartbroken by the loss of our wonderful and caring son and brother Sean Collier. Our only solace is that Sean died bravely doing what he committed his life to, serving and protecting others. We're thankful for the outpouring of support and condolences offered by so many people. We are grieving his loss and ask that the media respect our privacy at this time. And it was at about 10.30 last night that Officer Collier was in his cruiser, uh, and this was at the intersection of Mass Ave and Vassar Street. He was shot multiple times, and he was pronounced dead at MGH. And the circumstances surrounding that shooting, still not entirely clear. ABC News has been reporting that Officer Collier was shot in cold blood, which obviously compounds this tragedy. So again, Sean Collier, just 26 years of age, on the MIT police force for just over a year killed in the line of duty. The black bunting here behind me is a sign that this department certainly is grieving today. And we'll send it back to you. Todd, Todd, I'd heard a report earlier that there was some sort of a procession of MIT police officers at some point through the morning. I hate to put you on the spot. I don't know if you saw that or heard anything about that, but that there was some show of respect uh, for Sean Collier. We did see that, Anthony, and it's, uh, I saw the tail end of it. It's my understanding that that was the medical examiner's vehicle coming through 
and when that came through with the body of Officer Collier, the officers who were here at MIT Police Headquarters came out and stood at attention and saluted their fallen comrade. Hey Todd, do we know much more about the um, disturbance call that Officer Collier was responding to? The exact timeline is still uh, a little unclear. We know that there was, of course, a report of, uh, of a robbery, and we also know that, that uh, Officer Collier was in his cruiser, which suggests that he hadn't yet gotten to the call, he hadn't gotten out of the cruiser, um, and so the exact circumstances, again, surrounding what happened, still not clear to us. That's something that will be under investigation by the DA's office. And uh, so the MIT Police Department has a very difficult challenge today because they still have to go on carrying out their responsibilities while at the same time mourning the loss of one of their own. It's a relatively small department, and uh, so obviously um, this very much hits very close to home for them. Boy, it sure does. Todd Kaskevich live at the MIT uh, Police Officers Department right now. Where the black bunting is up and just, just a very somber mood there. A lot of colleges and universities, by the way, closed today as part of this uh, lockdown, MIT among them. Um, and UMass Dartmouth. UMass Dartmouth. Where, where suspect number two, the one that you're looking at right now, Joe Carr, um, was apparently a student and had lived in a dormitory there and uh, Ted Reinstein, Chronicles Ted Reinstein, mm -hmm. has been out there talking to a number of the students who worked out with him, who, you know, uh, lived in the dorm where he would come and go and said they were just really stunned that uh, this... All right, sorry, we're getting some new information. Do you want to reveal that, Anthony? Governor Patrick has just met with the other police officer who was injured, uh, MBTA police officer Richard Donahue. He's 33 years old. Um, as of noon, we had been told he was in critical condition but out of surgery at Mount Auburn Hospital. Uh, good news, I suppose, that the governor was able uh, to meet with him, has met with him. Here you see a, a picture of uh, Richard Donahue. MBTA police officers, among many other agency police officers that were responding and involved in that shootout uh, last night in Watertown. So the, let's tell you what we know about 